Hi everybody, it's Render in the Northern Hemisphere. I'm reminded of a great movie called Render Sleep by Nuri Bilge Ceylon. He's a director with wonderful composition to his scenes. I like studying films. There are so many elements to the cinematic method of storytelling. A challenge you might want to try is to compose a set of images in mid-journey inspired by the films of, of a director, but not using reference images or the director's name or the name of those films in any of the props. How close can you come to creating the images? Look at this image from another film by Nuri Bedre Ceylon. Think of the different ways you can describe this image. Let's try this prompt. From behind, black and white photograph, long shot of man walking away, head down, snowing, ground covered in snow, small town in the background. The results are remarkably good, though the environment is not what I was aiming for, yet the environment is exactly what I asked for in the prompt. Let's make a variation of the lower right image by modifying one aspect of the prompt, the background environment, changing small town to small Turkish village, wooden buildings. Immediately, we see a distinct change in the style of the buildings. The snowfall looks recent, but you can't tell that it's snowing. Let's change one word in the prompt from snowing to heavy snow falling. Wow, that, that's really good. Very atmospheric. You can see the drops of snow as they fall. About that background, is there anything distinctively Turkish about that? Do I need to designate a location? Let's see what happens if I remove that one word. The location, in this case, is not needed. I get different images, but they work equally as well for what I want to accomplish. At this point, I'm not trying to recreate a movie scene. I'm creating a variation on a scene. A still image from a movie has inspired me, but I want to try variations and see where mid-journey goes. Let's try a generic geographic location, Asian city, and add the modifier to Cade to this description of the buildings. Now, these are so right on target. All of these are wonderful cinematic Im images. Notice that I did not use the term cinematic in the pop. What if we try this as a color photograph by simply changing black and white to color? These are very nice, but there's that painterly feel to the images. It does not seem like a photograph. This may be exactly what you want. I do really like this style, but I am curious about how to get more photorealistic. Let's experiment by adding one word to the pump, the word I didn't add before, cinematic. Perhaps the images are slightly sharper. When I think of the term cinematic, though, I tend to think that it has more influence on the composition of the scene. Let's add in hyper-realistic to the term. That term has a precise meaning that's worth a video all on its own. And since cinematic did not seem to have much impact, I'm replacing cinematic with hyper-realistic. I cannot really tell a difference. Let me upscale one of these images. I really do like these images, but I would not be convinced that it's a photograph. Here's the upscaled image. It's an incredible image, but not photorealistic. Hyperrealistic is often accompanied by 8K in these image prompts. Let's add that to the prompt along with the word photography so that the final three terms in the prompt are hyperrealistic 8K photography. Good images, great composition, but I'm not seeing any changes in the photographic appearance. I did a previous video about specifying a type of film stock in the prompt. Let's try specifying a film by adding Kodak Portra 160 to the end of our last prompt. Okay, this makes a difference. Let's upscale the image in the lower right. Here's the upscaled image. Let's work our way backwards and remove hyperrealistic 8K photography photography, but keep Kodak Portra 160 to see if there's a difference. 
I think in this case that hyperrealistic 8K photography is not needed. Specifying the film stock in this instance works better. Let's try another image, a new composition. Here's our prompt. Color photograph, long shot, render landscape, walkie outcrop, orange pickup truck, clouds, low mountains in the background, rules a third, Kodak Ultramax 400. Let's see what we get. That's interesting. Most of the images are very bright, very sunny. The image in the lower right is more what I'm looking for. Let's add the term overcast to the prompt to see if we can get other compositions. Here I wanted to get the truck further in the distance. So I added the phrase in the distance after truck, but that did not seem to have any impact. You can set yourself up for some challenges when you try to control the composition. Let's modify the prompt to have the truck in the background. And that didn't change the composition. I could go much further, but I want to move on to a different scene. From behind, color photograph, long shot, man standing on railroad tracks in winter, crown covered in snow, overcast sky. These do look photorealistic. Often you can get photorealism from simply the type of scene without specifying any additional props. But as an experiment, I'm going to try a film stock that I've not used before. Fuji Astia 100F. These are very nice compositions, upscaling the lower right. I like this image a lot. There's still this stuck on quality to the picture, the sharp contrast, throwing off the depth of field to a degree that seems unnatural. Of course, it is unnatural. And the head is a bit pointy. Look to the background though, and there's a painterly feel to the bushes and the abandoned train car. But that works really well for this image. I decided to try a light upscale redo. His head is less pointy. The bushes over here are more natural looking, but the image has more of that distressed texture that you usually see with light upscale redo. I need to do a video on all the upscale options in Mid Journey. What happens if we try positioning the man in a one quarter or profile pose? Here's our prompt. That's a good modification with a slight adjustment to his stance. I'm trying a few remasters of our previous images. You can get inspiration from many places. I like movies. I love movies. Use everything for inspiration. Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself to make variations. Try one change at a time to see what works. Enjoy creating images.